Hey, we need to pay attention to this roof. Oh my mark. Everything that you imagine a tornado can do happened here in our little small town of Sulphur. Go check the bison because we were afraid they're gonna get out. All the flood and all the water, we knew that our creek fence crossings were gonna be damaged. It's been a wild three days and uh, it's hard to swallow, it's hard to take in. My mom's store was uh, right down in there, Buffalo Hippie, and it uh, got destroyed. Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. If you guys aren't aware, a couple days ago, I know Saturday, April 27th, my hometown of Sulphur, Oklahoma, got hit with a tornado in the downtown portion of Sulphur. In that area that was uh, hit by the tornado was my mom's shop. She'd been running this store for several years and uh, it was a boutique. We sold our some of our meat, bison meat and merch in there. I'll tell you guys about everything right here on this video just give you a recap but um it's been a wild three days four days just to uh just to say the least we were actually able to go downtown we snuck through about 2 a.m me my buddy mark neil and marissa and uh we wanted to see if we could help any way rescue people or help do anything possibly we could do it was pouring rain and everything but we were able to make it to my mom's store buffalo hippie and we uh, went and had to take a look inside. Hey, we need to pay attention to this roof. Son of a gun, dude. Well, there's some Boston snack sticks. Good luck. Oh my gosh. Oh my mark. Holy crap. Hey, 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 hey. We better back out. We better back out. We better back out. Back out. Back out. brother mark careful unbelievable guys unbelievable here's big joe hey um does she have a cash register here i don't know i'm just asking Okay. Well, we finally were able to get home. Got a couple hours of rest, but Marissa and I had to turn around and basically go check the bison because we were afraid they're gonna get out because all the flood and all the water, we knew that our creek fence crossings were gonna be damaged. Never seen it that high before.
Yeah, it wrapped around the tree. Folded it in half and wrapped it around the tree. I think we can flatten that out? Yeah. You're optimistic this morning, Dusty. <clears throat> Hold on. <clears throat> no, it's in there. Hey, buddy. We're kind of doing an early morning herd check a late night. I guess we have a lot to talk about, but um, Marissa and I came in to do a herd check. We got all the cows. Uh, we haven't drove through them to wake them up and see all the red dogs that we have, but we should have a total of five red dogs right now. But Marissa and I have been working on the uh, creek fence crossing and uh, for the past hour or so um, on that. But we were up late last night at uh, downtown sulfur where the tornado hit and um, we're taking care of the animals first and uh, making sure everything's okay. There's two crossings on the property where the fences go over a creek and so we're going to go check the other one. So far we just need one more panel for when we just took care of the big one that we've been working on and uh, we're going to go check this other one and then uh, make sure we have all of our red dogs and everything's okay here but definitely a lot of rain. Major flooding uh, some crazy stuff has happened here in the past um, less than 24 hours. Uh, okay, we're gonna go check and make sure you guys are over here playing. Star. One, two, three, four, five. I think we need to drive over and check on that mama though. She's over the car herself. Seems suspicious. I think 
it's her over here, Dusty. I think that's a green tag. What are you doing, kid? There's the panel. No. Was a panel right here across this. I had a feeling it'd be down. There's the panel right there. Well, so far this fence is together, but the water got so absolutely high. It got into that debris all up in that fence. So we just checked the other spot and it's completely gone. It's wrapped around a tree. So we're kind of in a hurry now because they're in the they're in this burn unit here and uh, <clears throat> it's a wide open gap right now. If they wanted to come down here and uh, go through it, they could easily go up and travel. They could travel the creek basically. So we know where some cruddy gates are that are lightweight uh, we're gonna go get them real quick and then bring them back over here before the bison get up and, and move hopefully they don't but uh, they, they will come in the woods here and uh, and hang out sometimes so we better kind of move quick shed I've ever found. Really? I've never found a shed. That's awesome. That was, uh, didn't we see that buck? That's a nice buck. I, I don't that know. It's fine, babe. Hey, yeah. Look how tall that sucker is. I haven't found an arrowhead yet, but I found my first shed. Nice job. That's a really good first shed to find. Hey. This is what it looked like. <laughs> Pretty cool. That's a nice shed. It is. Good catch. Yeah. Good, catch. good deal. Yeah, you don't want to drive over there. No. Wouldn't do good things for your tires. For sure.
this was all underwater too, Dusty. Holy buckets. That's, that's probably 100 yards at least. Four feet in height, maybe more. A lot more than that, I guess. Five or six feet high. Can you tell about how high the tree is? Yeah, it's built up that much. Five twelve. <laughs> Jeez, dust. Yeah, it's a lot of water. I mean, it's still flowing right now, but... Oh, my favorite sock! You found it! Oh, and roly-polies. Brooks would be thrilled. This one's still good shape. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually shocked. I thought it was... I figured total loss at this point. You're doing good, babe. Hmm? That won't help this situation. I was well, we just finished patching up that creek crossing, the big one that we've been working on recently that we did with uh, some of our friends help us put together. Um, Sam and Joel kind of built the foundation. We just patched it up. Luckily, we found another panel about 100 yards from that creek crossing right here, fence crossing. We found it, but Marissa and I got three panels and we needed one more to patch it up, but we've got it hung up and good for now. It's basically back in the same shape it was in, much better than it was, uh, just being wide open. So we've got two panels left. We're going back over to our uh, northwest corner, and uh, this is gonna be a bit challenging. We've gotta run a barbed wire across there, and then uh, we're gonna hang these panels off the barbed wire, but we gotta stretch it first. And we're going to hang these two off of it and still let it sway and uh, got to do our best to keep the bison in. All right, so Marissa and I got it. We stretched one strand of barbed wire. We used a uh, tree, the biggest, thickest tree. It kind of was slightly perfect for us. Right here, you can see the old H brace. It's been there since we got this property. And then we took these two panels that we picked up. These are actually old gates that we took off um, some of our gates and replaced them with heavy duty for our bison. We've been using those randomly around the Ponderosa, but we got those, put those on here. So we just tied them, the main one right here, on top of the barbed wire, and we stretch it to this H brace, which is actually still in really good shape. And that sucker is straight, and it must be pretty deep in the ground. So luckily we still had something to tie our barbed wire to and tie the panels to. So thankful for some trees and good areas, but we left plenty of room underneath there. A calf could, a calf could get under there for sure. But if the bison are coming down here and just drinking, that's okay. If they're trying to get out, we have problems. But 
but they've got plenty of grass and stuff they should be happy but they will come down here and drink some of this water but um we just have to come back and keep an eye on this and we knew from a flood we'd for sure have issues so all right we've got everything done we're going to go check fence lines now because we've already seen some trees that have fallen over on the fence and so that's an easy exit for bison or any animal so we're going to do that next Dusty, what kind of animal was this it's a sagittal crest <laughs> what well, oh this is called the sagittal crest dogs have sagittal crest coyotes okay. do not it's that thin bone on top of the skull uh -huh. top of the head okay Cows don't have a sagittal crest. So it's not as coyote. It's a dog. Oh, that's sad. Okay, none. Mm -hmm. Google it. <laughs> Google this. Yeah. Okay, there it's you go. Dog. Yeah, if you feel the top of your dog's eggs, you can feel that bone. The cows don't have it. I would have thought it was a raccoon. <laughs> that's a huge raccoon. I don't know. <laughs> They're fluffy. Could be. You know, that's why I said let's ask the animal guy. What you got there? We found your sock earlier. Now we found your Favorite. large, it's Favorite. got the dazzle flip flops <laughs> on it. Already curved, ready for your foot. Oh, hey, what a deal. I tell you what. A skull. Oh, kinds of stuff. Antler, sock, parts of the fence. Yeah, that is no joke. I mean, it's crazy the water got up that high and all that's caught in the in there and the water is like way down the hill there and it's still running we're supposed to get more rain today too really yeah that's what donna said so <sighs> happy for rain we'll not complain about rain no except for all the homes that are destroyed and now they're gonna stuff's gonna get even more soaked than what it already did that's the bad part well, we just got back up to the barn. Now I gotta go get our daughter. She's been at the Arms family and uh, see if we can even get in town. Got town closed off, they're still looking for people. stuff hi guys uh, here we are Marissa and I just want to give you an update on kind of what's been happening but as you can see here um, we are uh, this is downtown sulfur uh, there was a two or three story apartment complex right here uh, this is Chickasaw Telephone Company. It's our Wi-Fi and our phones is right here. Uh, this is our USPS, our post office. This is where, if you've got merch from us, um, this is where it's came out of. Also, uh, so right over here is an old lumber yard. Um, I mean, this is just, there's lots of stuff I can sit here and tell you about, but guys, this is where hardcore portion of this tornado that came through last Saturday, um, April 27th came through at, and it, uh, it just, this place looks completely, completely different. And uh, growing up in Oklahoma, we're used to tornadoes. We're used to this type of destruction. Um, we've had some very, very severe tornadoes uh, since just my days of growing up in Oklahoma. Um, and we've seen that, but when it's in your hometown and now you're seeing it every day and you're kind of, you're in it trying to help the community it's a way different look on things. 
um, because you know this is our community this is my hometown this is where I grew up and uh, you know you just don't ever think that your town's gonna get hit it's always the other towns that you see on TV uh, that get hit but uh, everything that you imagine a tornado can do happened here in our little small town of sulfur and uh what's amazing right now just to give you a quick update oh there's two scissor tails flying around um state bird i think i oh yeah we're up in my oklahoma shirt today but um what's amazing uh to me is yes there's a lot of devastation here but what is amazing to me the most is the amount of people that have been here from even out of town in town the town next to us is just davis oklahoma which is actually our ranch is, is actually in the uh davis um zip code um just the outreach of people that are wanting to come and help it's amazing sulfur like multiplied in size in just like literally two days monday morning this place was completely different not because of the devastation of what tornado did but all the people all the service trucks and the companies here to help this community it's amazing uh how many people are wanting to help and so we value that um we call something called the oklahoma standard and uh it's basically uh something that we've gained in oklahoma as a reputation of helping others and being a really good neighbor um, by the Oklahoma standard and I think that was probably set by the bombing um, April 19th 1995 so a lot to uh, happening right here it's gonna take a long time to rebuild um, my mom's store was uh, right down in there Buffalo Hippie and it uh, got destroyed yes got the ATV loaded down my skidster is already up there been using the ATV to deliver meals but I meet with my brother-in-law from our my homestead, Dutch, and some other guys. Uh, we're doing some uh, cleanup on some property. I got some footage of uh, some of the destruction, and uh, it's hard to swallow. It's hard to take in, and uh, you just have to be in the presence to see all the destruction. Videos and and pictures don't do it justice, and it's a it's a sad thing. But we're gonna do some cleanup with skits here. Marissa and Brooks and I, along with some friends and family have been uh, delivering meals to a lot of the storm victims uh, in this area of sulfur that uh, don't have power and basically some of them don't have homes at all so anyways uh complete uh, flip-flop of this town but uh we're all coming together to help uh help the community and so we're headed to town keep you guys updated on everything and um on how everything's going here in uh, our hometown of sulfur see you guys in a little bit So I just called Daniel and now we're uh, headed to the location where they're at and they need a grapple. So I've got the precision manufactured grapple I've had for a couple years now and that sucker's a beast. So we're gonna head over there and see if we can help. I got the grapple, you got the bucket. Yep. Daniel's got the big toy. Tell me how that chain got wrapped around there during the tornado. You know, I kind of wondered that too. <laughs> well, Daniel's pulling up. Uh, he's been running his um, excavator. I've been running the my skid steer in New Holland and uh, this was uh, 
Uh, some friends in town, but one of Daniel's close friends. This is the liquor store. It used to be right here. Yeah, it's uh, that's what's left. <laughs> they came and had to get everything because there's been a problem with looters. Of course, an unfortunate part of when things like this happen, uh, there are looters that come to town and start getting into stuff. But So right over here was just a convenience store. It was completely, completely demolished. Uh, I think right in this area, I'm not sure how wide this uh, tornado was, but uh, it was pretty, pretty darn wide. Yesterday, I was talking to you guys over there at those apartment complexes. Not sure how those apartment complexes made it, but that one right there, just south of the store, is a two or three level. I think it was a two level um, apartment complex. I was standing over there yesterday, and after I turned off my camera the lady came up to me I was sitting there looking at this house and um, she said uh, she asked me if this was if I was doing something when I was like no I'm just filming and talking but uh, she said her parents lived there uh, for like 40 or 50 years and uh, she said they sold it in the early 2000s anyway she said yeah they spent uh, most of their married life in this in this home and she wanted to it was an old one of them old rock homes and she asked if you know if it would be okay to take one of those rocks uh from the wall and i said absolutely sure a little bit of memory but you know it just hits you uh there's a lot of history there and you know they haven't had that home in a long time and her parents are both deceased uh and have been for a while but uh that home was still uh, a memory to her it's still memorable to her and personal and she uh I told her, I said, go in there, and if you need to, me to help you, I could help you at Loader Rock or something, because they're big rocks. But um, anyways, uh, just stuff like that, you know, that's impacting so many people. There's a lot going on, as you can see, a lot of traffic. So basically, uh, what Daniel and I did today, he was kind of in some places, I was in kind of different places. Sometimes we were working together along with our friend Dutch. We are basically getting the brush. Here's a perfect example. Here's the back of a home right here. Uh, you can see all this brush. We're trying to get brush, move it to the front of people's yards so that um, any skid steers or excavators or any type of that uh, machinery can grab it and load it in all the dumpsters or all these uh, dump trucks that are coming in now. You can see there's, there's two over there. Those are two really large ones. You got two skid steers and an excavator cleaning that uh, store up that's they've almost got the whole thing cleaned up you wouldn't even it was a giant pile not too long ago but um so we've been cleaning up brush basically taking it to the street stacking it up if we can create two different stacks one with just wood or trees um we can do that any of the debris though we're trying to keep separated but it's very hard to do i mean you can look at this kind of stuff right back here all mixed in Guys, it is a mess here in this town, but uh, it's amazing uh, to see all of the people coming in here and wanting to volunteer and just giving up their time and their energy for uh, for us. It's uh, I that's just something I didn't. Ex uh, you know, you know, people are, people want to help. There's a lot of good Oklahomans out there. Uh, Oklahoma is known for this thing, right? Uh, but um, it's just when it's your hometown, there's so many people that are wanting to come and help us. And I'm out here doing it. Daniel's out here doing it. And uh, lots of locals are. But it's all the out-of-towners that are coming too. So that's the thing right now is it is being cleaned up. Uh, I guess this is day four, basically, of recovery. They're getting debris hauled out. They're taking it to the limb yard south of Sulphur. And uh, it's just been a... It's been an interesting day and uh, the bad part is we had storms come through last night and made everything it rained of course and made everything super soggy in people's yards uh, we had a hard time getting some of these massive trees out and uh, even uh, one of our other friends in town Bradley he was cutting trees uh, with the saw and Daniel and I were in there getting it uh, now Marissa is gonna meet me over here we've got the ATV parked right here Marissa and Brooks and uh, we're gonna grab some meals and start passing those out. Now in the area that we were just in, um, cleaning up debris and stuff, uh, we're gonna go pass meals out there. And, uh, so 
anyways guys this is what's going on you can see there's a lot happening back here uh sometimes i told marissa i was like i don't even know what i'm doing you know i'm like where am i at and like this is just so strange and uh sorry you haven't uh seen any bison stuff we've got five babies just to just to keep you updated on that we did a late night herd check last night and uh, it was getting dark we uh just had a long day it's just weird right now to be honest with you it's just weird i don't know what to think about all of it i don't know if anybody does this is not something we're definitely used to but uh we're getting through it we're getting through it and um it's gonna take a little bit day-to-day -day process and uh, the other bad part is there's lots of bad weather still rolling through Oklahoma and uh, typical April in Oklahoma. So guys, just uh, keep sulfur uh, on your mind and um, we just appreciate uh, the outreach and the support uh, from everybody uh, that's coming to the town and wanting to help and reaching out to us. I mean, we appreciate all the uh, effort and the love and support that we're getting. So. Uh, thank you guys. We'll catch you up again.